welcome and thank you for joining me here again at Film Pro Productivity. Each week I'll be introducing concepts that film professionals and other creatives can use to make life easier and avoid creative burnout. I'll also present time management and lifestyle hacks for a more focused, effective and happy life. My name is Carter Ferguson and this is episode 8, The 5 Second Rule. Now, before I go on to the five-second rule, in the last episode, I detailed how the Pareto Principle can be applied to our lives and work to save time and effort on the wrong things. And I'm wondering, have you been able to identify something in your own life or work in which the 80-20 rule can be applied? And if you have, then how has that been working out for you? If you've found it useful, I'd really love to hear from you and get your thoughts. So please remember that you can call into the show using the SpeakPipe recorder on filmproproductivity.com's contact page. That's like a voicemail service. You can leave a 90-second message in it, and I'll try and use that in a future episode. You can also get in touch via Twitter at filmproprodpod or even on my personal Twitter handle, which is at fight underscore director. On this week's show, I will be talking about Mel Robbins' five-second rule and how you can use it to cut through indecision, beat fear and uncertainty, hack procrastination, become confident, share your ideas with courage, stop worrying and feel happier. Now that's a hell of a list of reasons to keep on listening, so without further ado, I'm going to get into it. I've got so many anecdotes about missed opportunities and risks not taken in my life that I could fill out a full episode just on that, but amongst them all, it's very probably opportunities missed when working with people that I admire that I regret the most. It took me three times working with John Gordon Sinclair for me to actually pluck up the courage to discuss Gregory's Girl with him, a film that I absolutely love. I also directed fights in a movie with Idris Elba and Clark Peters in it. It was called Legacy and was shot by Black Camel Pictures in Glasgow. I regret not asking for my photo with these two amazing actors. I talked myself out of it. I talked myself into just sailing along and not engaging too much because I was really in awe. When all is said and done, I really should have asked at least one of those amazing actors if they'd considered being in one of my films. I didn't ask, and I've got regrets. This week I decided to try a new productivity hack. I don't just talk about these things on a podcast I actually do try all of the hacks and techniques before I bring them to you here and I try and bring you things that I think really do work. So this week's hack was to listen to the audio version of a book rather than to read it. I chose Mel Robbins' five second rule which I listened to on Audible whilst I was driving to and from work and at the gym and it was an excellent exercise and Luckily for me, the content was strong, and I figure that while it's still fresh in my mind, I will bring it to you here today. I'll also post a link to it in the show notes, as it's got far more to it than I can go into here in a 10-minute podcast. I would say, on top of that, that Mel reads the book herself on Audible, and it's a great listen. So if you didn't want to buy the paper version or the Kindle download, try it on Audible. It's really, really great. She's passionate and enthused about the technique which she first raised on a TED Talk uh, and you can view that on YouTube. That was in 2011 and I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Right up front, I'll clarify, (laughs) just as Mel does, that we are not talking about a rule for picking up dropped food. But Mel Robbins' five second rule is quite simple and it's this. If you've got an instinct to act on a goal you must physically move within five seconds or your brain will kill it. I'll say that again. If you've got an instinct to act on a goal, you must physically move within five seconds or your brain will kill it. The rule is a simple, one-size-fits-all solution for the one problem that we all face. We hold ourselves back. You see, the secret isn't knowing what to do. It's knowing how to make yourself do it. Mel's TED Talk is called How to Stop Screwing Yourself Over, by the way, and I love that title as I do think that we sabotage our own efforts time and time again through politeness or upbringing or fear of letting others down. The thing is, if you watch the TED Talk, the five-second rule is something she says literally in the last two minutes, but it's so essentially simple and 
actionable that it spawned a book and a whole ethos. Mel explains that the five second rule is a way of harnessing activation energy, which is a chemical term, but it's one that serves Mel's productivity rule quite well. She says that the moment you feel an instinct or a desire to act on a goal or commitment to use the rule, when you feel yourself hesitate before doing something you know you should do, count five, four, three, two, one, go and physically move towards action. Through little acts of courage, the five second rule makes you less afraid over time. But the right time might never come, so you just have to start. The five second rule helps you to override your feelings, a tactic which is called psychological intervention. There's a window that exists between the moment that you have an instinct to change and your mind killing that instinct. It's a five second window and it exists for everyone. So how does this really work? Five, four, three, two, one. Mel tricked herself into getting out of bed when she really didn't want to, when she was really down, after watching a rocket launch the night before. And how did she do it? How did she stop herself from hitting the snooze button again and again on her alarm clock? That's what she'd been used to doing. She'd been doing that for months. Well, Mel's five-second rule was born out of the memory of that rocket launch she'd witnessed the night before. So she just counted down. Five, four... Three, two, one, and took action. It's as simple as that. In whatever you're doing, as soon as you reach one, push yourself to move. The counting down focuses you on the goal or commitment at the same time that it distracts you from worries, thoughts and excuses in your head. Five seconds is all it takes. But if you don't act on the instinct within the five second window, that's it. You're not going to do it. Mel breaks this down further and explains that there are five elements to her rule. One, the moment you have an instinct, and that instinct is something that Mel defines as an impulse, an urge, or a knowing that you should or shouldn't do something because you feel it in your heart or in your gut. These instincts or urges are the knowing that you should do something, even if you don't feel like it. Secondly, to act on a goal. To act on a goal. And our point here is that it's an instinct that's tied to a goal. The gut feeling is when our hearts and minds are trying to tell us something, and usually these gut impulses are tied to greater goals. Third, you must push yourself the rule is about pushing yourself even when you don't want to. It's about taking control of your own life, one push at a time. The moment comes, you feel the instinct, you know it's tied to a goal. Right now, it's the window of opportunity, your brain wants to shut the instinct down, it's going to do it, but in that moment, in this moment, you take control. Next, to move within five seconds. Physical movement is the key. All you need to do is move in the direction of your instinct. If you do not take physical action within five seconds, your brain will kill the instinct. You do your countdown, five, four, three, two, one, and then you go. You take action. This could mean a number of things. It could mean saying something that you've been holding back, for example, putting on your running shoes, or even holding your tongue instead of saying something. It could even mean sending an email to a potential client, or even to someone influential that you would love to be a mentor. Anything at all that's related to your goal. These five second windows, as she calls them, are the critical moments between you changing your life and your brain stopping you. And lastly, or your brain will kill it. If you don't physically move within five seconds, your mind will kill your dreams. Your brain is like an overprotective, irrational helicopter parent. It's got three basic jobs. It narrates your life as you live it and catalogues your memories. It operates your body's functions and it protects you from danger. And how does it protect you? By keeping you from doing anything that feels scary, hard or uncertain. So the five second rule is a way to outsmart your brain by changing hesitation into action. The book is full of real life stories of the five second rule with examples such as Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King to those that follow Mel's lead these days and use the rule in their day to day lives. 
It's a tool that creates massive change. These five second windows add up. And in almost every situation, you will be able to find an application for this rule. Mel Robbins also points out that from each small act of courage, more courage follows. It compounds and means that, hopefully, when you're older, you can look back upon a courageous life. Much of this episode uses the words of Mel, but I felt that was a good quote to end on. Now, some of you out there might be doubting this whole five-second rule thing. But before you do, before you dismiss it, just give it a try. I'm sure that the results will speak for themselves. Mel Robbins' five-second rule allows you to create great drive in yourself, find courage where there was none, and seize opportunities whenever they arise. In this week's Call to Action, I urge you to get to grips with the five-second rule. When the alarm goes off, don't hit snooze. Count five, four, three, two, one, and get up. When you see an opportunity to talk to someone you admire, count five, four, three, two, one, and talk to them. Don't let your brain take over. When you're stuck and need to make any decision, hit five, four, three, two, one, and you'll find that the decision has been made subconsciously for you and you will be able to move on. So that is the end of this week's episode. Thanks once again for listening. Next episode, I'll be talking about the one-touch rule and other systems which will allow you to deal with the day-to-day slog of getting stuff done. Until then, take control of your own destiny, keep on shooting, and join me. Please join me next time on Film Pro Productivity. The music that you're listening to right now is Adventures by Ehumitsu. And you can read the show notes for this episode on the official website at filmproproductivity.com. If you're struggling with something you think I can help with or would like to tell me how you're getting on, then please get in touch via the contact page on the website. Alternately, you can get me on Twitter at fight underscore director or follow the show at filmproprodpod. Please subscribe on the podcast app of your choice and if you're in a caring, sharing mood then I'd really appreciate it if you'd spread the word and leave an awesome review.